Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video I want to look at the editing process when we pick pictures that we're going to enter into a, a photography competition. So uh, I've just been um, shortlisted uh, in two categories for the British Wildlife Photographer of the Year and I'm really pleased about that. Now it's been a few weeks so I'm guessing I've probably only got as far as the shortlist but it got me thinking because I've just had to go through this process you know we shoot loads and loads of pictures which ones do we think are good enough um, to go into a be entered into a competition and um, the basic stuff I think we're all probably aware of the picture needs to be uh, sharp so it needs to be well focused uh, and free of camera shake it needs to be well exposed the composition needs to be good and we need to be using the right light for the right subject. So they're all the basic things that you need before you even start thinking about whether that picture's, you know, worthy of entering into a competition. And then when it's, we've looked at those areas, I think the most important thing when it comes to um, choosing the images that we want to enter is, is it different? Has it got some atmosphere? Has it got some mood? So it might be some really unusual animal behavior. It might be fantastic atmospheric light. Uh, it might be unbelievable weather conditions. It might be just something that's a little bit different. And that's what we're looking for, I think, when we enter a competition. We need our photographs to stand out from the rest of the crowd. And in order to do, do that, they need to be just a slightly little bit different and unusual. Now, I entered uh, 10 pictures uh, this year and I got two images, um, that went into the uh, uh, the shortlist process, and um, that left ten that didn't. So what we I thought we'd do in this video is look at the two pictures that got shortlisted, and think about why they maybe would will have got shortlisted, and then look at the other eight pictures that didn't get shortlisted, and uh, see you know why the judges thought that they weren't worth uh, you know moving on to the next stage. So the first one I'm going to look at is a picture of um, a grey seal that I took on uh, a beach in Norfolk. And we're moving, so it's, it's on the screen now, but obviously you won't be able to see that. So we'll cut to the picture now and we'll talk about that. This picture of uh, a grey seal pup is one of four. And this was the one that got shortlisted for the competition. And I think the reason it did well is because of the weather conditions. It was really stormy. The rain was lashing down, the wind was blowing, and these poor grey seals were just getting covered with sand and the sand was forming textures over their fur. And I, I think these conditions made the picture unusual. And uh, it's the sort of weather conditions you wouldn't normally go out and take photographs in. I had my camera and lens covered with a rain cover. And as I say, this element of uh, Terrible weather conditions made the picture unusual. You don't see pictures taken in these conditions very often, and I think that's why it did okay. Now, if we look at the second picture taken on the same day, I think this one didn't make the cut because there's probably too much empty space on the right-hand side of the frame and the bottom of the frame. So I think that's why it didn't do so well. And then if we look at the third image, um, the seal's got its eye open, and... Um, Normally that will be a good thing, but in this case, it's not looking at the camera. It's almost looking away from the lens. So we don't have that contact between the, uh, the subject and the viewer. And I think that's why this image, again, didn't do as well as uh, the first one. And then last but not least, I like this shot. I, I love the action taking place. But again, I think it doesn't really probably suit the weather conditions because the seals, most of them were just hunkered down, just trying to wait out the storm. And I think this action shot that isn't really in keeping with the, the mood of the, um, the weather conditions at the time. Plus the fact, I think probably the crop is a little bit too tight for this shot. So all in all, um, I probably, you know, uh, I put in four because I couldn't really decide which one to enter. And it's probably a good idea that I did because I maybe would have entered the last picture in this series rather than the, rather than the first one. And obviously the first one was the one that did well. So, you know, it's... Um, it's a case of just trying to um, think of the image in terms of obviously the comp composition, but also the mood of the shot. Does the composition match that mood? 
The next set of pictures I want to talk about are uh, pictures of dragonflies and I think I entered three pictures uh, that, uh, from the same shoot uh, into the competition and again one of them got shortlisted. Now it's just um, when I first looked at the picture back you know on the camera it was it's a lovely picture of a dragonfly with its wings sort of out straight uh, resting on a, a stalk of grass and it's a nice picture but nothing particularly special or different but when I zoomed in there was these two little round sort of blobs above the dragonfly and uh, I thought god what's that and then I looked closer and it's the eyes of a damselfly and this dragonfly had caught the damselfly and uh, it was the, just the top of the damselfly was just poking above the dragonfly and it was really unusual and that's the picture that got shortlisted now as the wind blew it turned around and you could see the side of the dragonfly and the side of the damselfly and um, it um, it 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 was a lot more noticeable what was going on so again we'll uh, flick onto the picture on screen properly and uh, I'll talk you through it. So on the first picture, as I say, you can see quite clearly now, you've got the dragonfly with its wings outstretched and just above the head of the dragonfly, there's those two little blue eyes. And it sort of almost gives you an air of, of mystery or, or what's going on, you know, you're thinking what's happening here. But if we look at the next pictures, as the wind blew the dragonfly round and you could see the whole body of the dragonfly and the damselfly, it's sort of not, um, I don't think the picture's got, I think the picture hasn't got quite as much mood because it's more obvious what's going on. So that little bit of air of mystery isn't there anymore. And I think the reason the first picture was the one that got shortlisted is because it was a bit different again. And possibly the judges hadn't seen that type of uh, picture and that's why it got shortlisted. And as I say, you know, although I haven't gone past the shortlisting stage uh, by the looks of things, I'm still really, really pleased to have got this far because it's a national competition and uh, I'm, you know, I'm very grateful to have got to the shortlist stage. So uh, again, you know, it's about having that slightly different uh, composition, that slightly different picture. And this, this tells a slightly different story. It keeps the viewer guessing. So that's why I think the first picture in this series uh, got shortlisted rather than the next two which are a little bit more obvious. Now um, we'll move on and look at the um, the other pictures uh, that didn't get shortlisted at all and uh, maybe talk about why that is. Um, so if we look at the next shot I'll put it again uh, it'll be up on screen now and it's a picture of two foxes um, rearing up and, and sort of having a bit of a fight really uh, I suppose and um, I think the reason this probably didn't get shortlisted is because uh, even though it's some really nice behaviour, I think the background is a little bit, um, probably a little bit sharper than it needs to be, so a little bit distracting, and the foreground is a little bit distracting as well. And I think the light is quite harsh, so I think the light is, is a little bit contra too contrasty, uh, and I think the background and the foreground are probably a little bit distracting and taking away from that main animal behaviour. Now I really like this picture. But as I say, I think that's probably why it didn't get um, any further than sort of me just entering the shot. And then if we look at this shot of the uh, snow bunting, I took this uh, up at the uh, top of the Cairngorms in the winter in the snow. And I really like this shot. I love the out of focus background, you know, that snowy background. I like the snow in the foreground that's out of focus. There's a nice catch light in the eye of the snow bunting. But the fact of the matter is it's a, a portrait that probably the judges have seen uh, this type of portrait, you know, 100, 200, 1,000 times before. So it hasn't got that little area of, of sort of, you know, mystery or behaviour or it's just not different enough, I think, you know. So that's why this shot didn't make it to the shortlist. Um, and then if we look at the shots, this picture of the two J's, I spent a long time in the winter uh, trying to get these J's in flight and they're really quick, either taking off or landing. And uh, I've got a whole series of these J coming in and the other J having a little sort of shout at the first one. And I'm really pleased with the pictures. But again, I think because I shot with a higher F number in order to make sure that both J's were sharp, the background again is uh, not as soft as I would like it to be. And again, I think that's distracting. So that's probably why it didn't get picked um, and move on you know, to a short list for this competition. Uh, right, okay. Um, so I think that's all of them now, uh, all the pictures we've looked at. I'm just checking to see that I haven't missed any out. Um, no, I think that's it. So um, what I would say is, it's even if you're not going to enter a photography competition, it's really important um, 
to you know be a, a really sort of um, take a real good judgment of your own work you know even if we're not entering competitions we might be putting the, our pictures out on social media Instagram Facebook maybe YouTube or we might just be fr uh, showing friends and family but we only want to show them the best stuff so I think it's important to edit your work and uh, think about why that picture is worth showing to somebody else so I hope this video has been useful I hope you've enjoyed it and as usual, if you have enjoyed it, if you can give it a thumbs up, a like, that would be brilliant. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you can consider subscribing, that would be great, the more the merrier. And uh, if you've got any of your own views on what makes a great picture, a great wildlife picture, um, let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching, um, and I'll speak to you on the next video. Uh, bye for now, guys.